we have noticed uh, that in a tree this is a tree is a circuit free graph connected graph and if it has n vertices it will have n minus 1 edges another feature we can notice that uh, it has the minimum number of edges a connected graph is said to be minimally connected if removal of any one edge from it disconnects the graph. So here in tree we see that if we delete any of the edges, this say this edge connects these two vertices. If we delete this there, well, there remains no other connection between these two vertices. So, the tree becomes disconnected. That is, we, uh, it cannot have any circuit also. Otherwise, we can remove any edge from the circuit, still leave the graph connected. Thus, a minimally connected graph is a tree and a connected graph, if not minimally, minimally connected, there must exist an edge EI in G such that removal of EI from G, that is G minus EI, will remain connected. So, EI is, must be in some circuit which implies G is not a tree. Therefore, we can say that a tree is always minimally connected. Compiling all the properties, we can have, we can say that the five different but equivalent definition of a tree. First one is given by the definition that the a graph G with n vertices is called a tree if G is connected and circuit free, which is obtained from the definition. Then it is, uh, it will be a tree if G is connected and has n minus 1 edges with n vertices. Thirdly, we saw that if G is circuitless and has n minus 1 edges, it is a tree. Number four, we saw we have there is exactly one path between every pair of vertices in G. And we again uh, saw that G is minimally connected graph. If any of the of these five properties hold, then a graph G will be a tree. Now we discuss about problem. It is to be proved that in any tree with two or more vertices, there are at least two pendant vertices. Pendant vertices means sub vertex with degree 1. Now we know that in a tree with n vertices, we have n minus 1 edges. Hence, uh, each edge contributes 2 to the degrees. So, n minus 1 edges contributes 2 each. So, total number of degrees is 2n minus 1. There cannot be any vertex with 0 degree. So, if we uh, consider that there is no pendant vertex, so minimum degree of each vertex is 2, then we require minimum 2n degrees but we have 2 n minus 2 degrees. So, 2 degrees are deficit here. So, all the vertices cannot be of degree 2. At least there are 2 vertices with degree 1. A non-pendant vertex in a tree is called an internal vertex. Like this is an internal vertex, this is an internal vertex, this is an internal vertex and all these uh, vertices are pendant vertex. Now, 
we come to another definition that is spanning tree. Spanning tree is a tree obtained from any connected graph G. A tree T is said to be a spanning tree of a connected graph G if firstly T has to be a subgraph of G and T contains all vertices of G. In figure 18, it is a connected graph G and we have some dotted lines uh, in place of edges that is C1, C2 and C3 are dotted lines. So in figure 18, we have some uh, dotted lines uh, C1, C2 and C3 and uh, we can see that a graph comprising of B1, B2, B3 and B4 is a tree and it uh, contains all the vertices, all the five vertices of G and it is a subgraph of G. So, T is a spanning tree of G and we can have a number of spanning trees from G. If it is T1, it may be T1, we can have say, we can another um, spanning tree like T2. Here, these three edges that is B1, B3 and C3 are not taken. So, this is another spanning tree. In this way, we can have a number of spanning trees from a connected graph. And for finding a spanning tree from a connected graph, we are deleting some edges. Here, for T1, we have deleted C1, C2 and C3. These are called cords. And the edges which remains in T1 that is B1, B2, B3 and B4 are called branches of T1. And in case of T2, B3 is not a branch, B3 is a cord, B1 is not a branch, B1 is a cord here, whereas C1 is a branch that is not a cord. We can find a spanning tree from each component of a disconnected graph. Thus, a disconnected graph with k components, we can have k spanning trees for each component, from each component and these uh, spanning trees are together called spanning forest consisting of k spanning trees. Now we come uh, to a simple theorem which states that every connected graph has at least one spanning tree. Uh, we can see that um, if we try to trace out a spanning tree, we start from any vertex. Whenever we come across a circuit, we delete any of the edges of the circuit. Thus, we get at least one spanning tree like this. Say this is the graph we want to have the spanning tree of this. We start tracing the spanning tree from here. We come here. If we go in this way, it will form a circuit. So, we will delete any of the edge from the circuit and then continue tracing. Then whenever we trace out B3, it completes a circuit. So, in the same way, we delete one of the edges in the circuit and then if we trace C2, it will complete another circuit. Then again, we delete one of the edges contained in the circuit. So, in this way, we can have a spanning tree uh, and if G contains in vertices, 
we uh, know that the spanning tree of G will contain n minus 1 edges. Like this contains 5 vertices, any spanning tree will contain 4 edges. Now, uh, in a spanning tree, if we add any of the chords, then we will get a circuit. Like this, if it is a spanning tree T1 of G, if we add any of the chords, here chords are C1, C2, C3. If we add C1, then we will get a circuit which is called a fundamental circuit. Now we define binary tree. Binary tree is a tree uh, in which there is exactly one vertex of degree 2 and each of the remaining vertex vertices is of degree 1 or 3. Like this, this is a degree 2 vertex and the remaining vertices are either pendant vertices or the, this type of vertices which are degree which are of degree 3. So this is uh, distinct from any other vertices. So this is called a root. A binary tree is a rooted tree. Now there are two properties of binary tree. The first one is uh, the number of vertices n in a binary tree is always odd. We know that if the number of uh, vertices in a binary tree is n, there is only one vertex of degree 2 and remaining all vertices are of degree 1 or 3 that is odd degree vertices. So, the number of odd degree vertices here is n minus 1 and we know that the number of odd degree vertices in any graph is always even. So, n minus 1 is an even number. So, obviously, n is an odd number. Now, the property 2. Property 2 states that uh, if p be the number of pendant vertices, let p the, be the number of pendant vertices of a binary tree T, then the n minus p is the number of internal vertices that is non pendant vertex and number of vertices of degree 3 is minus 1 that is the root n minus p is the number of internal vertices which includes the root uh, of degree 2. So, number of vertices of degree 3 is n minus p minus 1. Therefore, we get uh, 3 into n minus p minus 1 into 1 into p that is the pendant vertices are of degree 1 and 1 root that is 1 into 2 will be equal to the total number of degrees of all the vertices that is twice the number of edges 2 into n minus 1 and from this, simplifying this, we get n minus p equal to p minus 1. n minus p equal to p minus 1. n minus p is the number of internal vertices of a binary tree and that is found to be 1 less than the number of pendant vertices. So, this is an important result for binary trees. Now we define isomorphic graphs. Uh, let two graphs are there, G and G dash. They are said to be isomorphic to each other if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between their vertices and between edges such that the incidence relationship is preserved. In other words, you can see the figure 20 of uh, two sets of isomorphic graphs g and g dash and g1 and g1 dash. Um, suppose that the edge E is incident on vertices v1 and v2 in G. Then the corresponding edge E dash 
of g dash must be incident on the vertices v1 dash and v2 dash that correspond to v1 and v2 respectively actually g1 and g1 dash are the uh, graphical representation of a cube uh, it is angle of view are different um, for two graphs so these are actually the same graph viewed in uh, two different we viewed from two different angles so these are called isomorphic graphs and next we um, define bipartite graph a bipartite graph is a graph uh, if it's if it uh, when its vertex set v can be decomposed uh, can be partitioned into two disjoint subsets v1 and v2 such that every edge in g joins a vertex in v1 with a vertex in v2 like this uh, the vertex set contains six vertices but it can be divided into three partitioned into two subsets say v1 and v2 we can see that no edge uh, the n vertices of any edge does not lie in uh, both does not uh, lie in one of the partitions the n vertices of any edge lies in two different partition of the vertex set this type of graphs is called bipartite graph so um, in a bipartite graph we can have the following result if uh, g v1 v2 is a bipartite graph then every circuit of it if any circuit exists has even length because if uh, a circuit exists then it starts from here say it has to go to v2 because it has no edge incident on it uh, which ends in any vertex uh, of v1 so he has it has to go to v2 and then to complete the circuit it has to come back to v1 and then if it goes to v2 again then it will come back to v1 to complete the circuit in this way uh, the edges are uh, traced edges are even in number so the circuit every circuit of it if exist they are of even length so in a bipartite bipartite graph we uh, always get, get even circuits